Hi everyone. So this video is about the next aspect of the body fluids and circulation where we are going to discuss about the structure of the human heart. Human heart according to the evolution what we can say is that human heart is said to be a four chambered heart which mainly consists of the two atrias and two ventricles. So much about the anatomy of the human heart we'll discuss in the later aspects. But firstly, let us start with that of the structure where we are going to discuss about what is the nature of the human heart. <coughs> so human heart is said to be a myogenic heart where the entire heartbeat originates by the help of the muscles. Thereby the human heart is called as a myogenic heart where myo refers to muscles and genic is generally the conduction or origin of the heartbeat. So that is a myogenic heart and it is also regarded as a valvular heart where it consists of many number of the valves. Okay, So thereby it is myogenic as well as the valvular heart. So this human heart is being located in between the space which is there between the two lungs just above to that of the diaphragm. So that space is called as media stenum or it is called as media stenal cavity. So that is the location where the human heart is present. So that is media stenum or it is called as the media stenal cavity okay so that is the space present in between the two lungs now next is what is uh, the weight of the human heart so human heart generally it varies in that of the males and females where generally in males it is around 230 280 grams whereas in females it weighs around uh, around 230 grams okay so that is sorry so 280 to 340 grams in males whereas 230 to 280 grams in the females so that is the weight of the human heart now if you look after the layers which are being present in that of the human heart so there are presence of mainly the three layers which are seen in the heart. So that is the outermost is where it is a protective covering. What we can say it as a, the pericardium. So this is the protective covering of the heart. So protective covering. So that is pericardium. So surrounding the heart. That is pericardium. So outermost to that of the pericardium is the presence of a fibrous connective tissue thereby that region is called as a fibrous pericardium. Below that is the layer where we call it as a parietal pericardium and uh, the lower one is called as a uh, visceral pericardium or you can even call it as epicardium it is even called as epicardium so what we are discussing here is about uh, the outer layer which is the protective covering so parietal pericardium is the outer one and below that is the visceral pericardium or also called as epicardium and in between this, there is presence of the space here, which is called as pericardial space, which is being filled with that of the pericardial fluid. Pericardial fluid. So the function of this pericardial fluid is, uh, it acts as a shock absorber, where whatever the mechanical uh, uh, pressure when it is being given to that of the heart region so that is being absorbed by that of the pericardial fluid so this is the first one that is the outer one that is called as pericardium second one is called as 
myocardium so this is the middle layer of the heart myo refers to muscle and cardia refers to heart which means this particular part of the human heart is made up of the muscles and these muscles are said to be the cardiac muscles and the cardiac muscles are those which are uh, involuntary muscles these are involuntary muscles and these are the striated muscles so the only muscles in that of the human body which are involuntary as well as striated so they are said to be the cardiac muscles which are responsible for the origin and the conduction of the heart beat so that is the cardiac muscles which are present in the second layer that is called as myocardium next one is the third one that is called as endocardium the innermost layer endocardium and this endocardium is made up of simple squamous epithelial cells so it is made up of the simple squamous epithelium that is the innermost part of the heart so these are the three layers that is pericardium the outermost layer which is mainly involved in that of the protection and thereafter is the second one that is called as myocardium and the third one is called as endocardium so in the pericardium as i said there is again differentiation of two layers outer one is called as parietal pericardium inner is called as visceral pericardium and in between is the presence of the fluid that is called as pericardial fluid okay so that is regarding the layers of the heart the protective layers as well as where the muscles are seen and the innermost where there is presence of the simple squamous epithelium so let us get into the structure of the human heart so human heart is made up of four chambers as i said first one here it is a right atrium this is a left atrium right ventricle and left ventricle so two atrium or two atria are there and two ventricles are there present in that of the human heart where the left atrium is responsible to receive the oxygenated blood whereas the right atrium is responsible for receiving the deoxygenated blood okay so let us discuss first about the atrium and thereafter we'll discuss about uh, the ventricles okay so here the right atria and left atria okay so these are uh, the receiving chambers which are mainly involved in that of receiving of the blood so either they may receive the oxygenated blood or they may receive deoxygenated blood so their main function is they are meant for receiving the blood okay from the different parts of the body and both the atria are being separated by that of the inter atricular or auricular septum so there is a separation there is a septum which is there which is located in between the two atria which separates them so during the embryonic condition what we can find here is in between these two there is a presence of a minor opening here so this minor opening is called as foramen ovale that is opening is being seen by birth itself so sorry during the embryonic condition so that is called as foramen ovale so we will just write here foramen ovale and as the individual starts developing okay so thereby this foramen ovale starts getting closed and thereby it forms a small depression over here so that is called as fossa ovalis leaving behind a small depression that is called as fossa ovalis so if an individual has the foramen ovale after his birth also so there is a probably a disease is being seen in an individual which we generally call it as a blue baby syndrome or it is called as a cyanosis so what exactly happens here in the cyanosis is uh, whenever the atria receives the right atria receives the deoxygenated blood so this deoxygenated blood is made to send into okay 
the left HCR and from the left HCR the deoxygenated blood gets mixed with that of the oxygenated blood and this mixed blood will be pumped out to all the parts of the body through that of the iota. So thereby there is a deficiency in that of the tissues as well as cells in the all other parts of the body thereby making an individual to have the color which will be bluish in color thereby the name blue baby syndrome. So majority of the individuals will have uh, the fossa ovalis which is generally the closed depression which will be seen but in some of the individuals there will be that uh, opening that whole retains okay after the death of sorry after the birth of an individual so that opening will be called as foramen ovale okay right so or you can call even it as uh, the hole in that of the heart right now the right atria okay so that is uh, able to receive the deoxygenated blood through that of uh, the veins such as inferior vena cava superior vena cava and the coronary sinus so these are the three veins by which uh, the right atrium will receive the deoxygenated blood from the different parts of the body now the superior vena cava which is there so this superior vena cava is also called as a, a pre caval vein it is called as a pre caval vein okay which receives the deoxygenated blood from the upper part of the body. Meanwhile, the inferior vena cava is also called as a post caval vein and this vein receives the deoxygenated blood from the lower parts of the body. And meanwhile, the coronary sinus, so this is uh, the veins which receive the deoxygenated blood from the heart itself, from the heart itself, the deoxygenated blood is being collected by the coronary sinus and this coronary sinus opens into the right atria, right? So now what you can see here is uh, the superior vena cava has its opening. So that is uh, uh, you know, what we can say it as uh, the opening of the superior vena cava and it is being set, okay? That is it also consists of a valve which is called as a Haversian valve which may not persist in that of the adult individuals. So thereby we say that superior vena cava does not contain any valve. Okay, that is in the later stages of the life. But initially it will be having a valve called as Haversian valve. Meanwhile, the coronary sinus has an, another valve which is called as a coronary wall or it is called as thebaceous wall thebaceous wall thebaceous wall or coronary wall so that is present in the opening of the coronary sinus in that of the right atria meanwhile the inferior vena cava when it opens into the right atria so that opening of the inferior vena cava is also guarded by an another wall that is called as eustachian walls now generally one common thing what we have to look after here is all these openings into the right atria are having walls that is meant for preventing the backflow of this deoxygenated blood from the right atrium into the respective veins. As the pressure in the veins is low, okay, so to prevent that backflow they have the valves present here, okay. So that is the right atria which is meant for receiving the deoxygenated blood. Now let us move on to that of the left atrium. So left atrium receives the oxygenated blood directly from that of the lungs through that of the veins which are called as pulmonary veins as because these are the veins which have been coming from that of the lungs to that of the heart thereby they are said to be the pulmonary veins and pulmonary veins are those which are uh, the only veins in the body which carries oxygenated blood because all the veins in our body are meant for carrying off the deoxygenated blood but pulmonary veins will carry oxygenated blood into the left 
atrium okay so here there are no walls because as the pressure is higher uh, of the blood so there is no walls present in these veins right so next is uh, uh, this is about uh, the atrium now the next part is uh, the atrium okay or the atria are being separated from that of the ventricles by the help of the interventricular sorry inter uh, atrioventricular valves so there are mainly the two valves which are present between the atria and uh, ventricle where you can see the left atria is separated from the left ventricle by a valve which is called as a bicuspid valve so here bi refers to two and the cusp refers to a small cartilage flap like structure so bicuspid valve or it is called also as a, a mitral valve also called as left atrioventricular valve so these are the other names which you have to remember for the competitive exams so in between the left atrium and left ventricle is the presence of a bicuspid valve and in between the right atrium and right ventricle is the presence of the tricuspid valve here three cartilage flaps are there which prevents the back flow of the blood so thereby the name tricuspid valve also you can call it as right atrioventricular valves okay right so next move on to that of the ventricles ventricles are larger when compared to that of the atria and ventricles are thicker when compared to that of atrium so why it is so that here if you see the ventricles ventricles are meant for pumping the blood out of the heart so thereby these are said to be the distributing chambers because they pump out the blood from the heart to other parts of the body so thereby these two can be called as distributing chambers and these two can be referred as a receiving chambers okay now if you look after the right a ventricle so right ventricle is thinner when compared to the left ventricle where right ventricle the lining which is there so that is around 4 to 5 mm in thickness whereas the left ventricle is around 9 mm in thickness so why is it so that this is thinner compared to that of the left ventricle is very simple that the right ventricle which receives the deoxygenated blood from the right atrium it has to pump the deoxygenated blood only to the lungs okay meanwhile the left ventricle which receives the oxygenated blood from the left atrium so this left ventricle has to pump the oxygenated blood to all the parts of the body so it has what here the pressure which is being there exerted for pumping of the uh, oxygenated blood to all the parts of the body so that pressure will be high when compared to that of the right ventricle hence what left ventricle is thicker when compared to right ventricle now one more thing is both the ventricles are being separated by the interventricular septum here also there is a separation that both the ventricles are not being joined together so they are being separated by a septum regarded as interventricular septum right now at the base of the ventricles what we are able to find is the structures which were being reported for the first time in that of the amphibians so they are called as columnae carnae these are set of the muscles which are being seen so these columnae carnae extends and gives rise to the the strings of the heart which are called as cardiac tendine and these strings of the heart you are able to see so these cardiac tendine on one side they are connected to the bi and tricuspid valves and the another side they are attached to that of the muscles which are called as papillary muscles okay now what is the function of these uh, cardiac tendine why, uh, why they are being connected to bi and tricuspid valves so generally what happens once the blood from the atria flows into that of the ventricle 
to prevent the back flow of the blood from the ventricle to that of the atria these cordate engine regulates the opening and closing of the tri and bicuspid valves which means whenever the pressure is more in that of the atria so they open up and allows the blood to flow into the ventricle and whenever the pressure in the ventricles will increase at that time these bi and tri cuspid valves will close so that regulation of opening and closing of these bi and tri cuspid valves is done by the cordine sorry cordae tendine okay and uh, between the columnar carne you are able to see some open spaces are being seen so these open spaces are called as fissures they are called as fissures right so one more thing is very important regarding two more valves which are seen in that of the ventricles so they are called as semi lunar valves where the right ventricle okay so they consist of the valve which is a semi lunar valve which gives rise to the pulmonary artery so thereby this is called as a pulmonary semi lunar valve meanwhile in the left ventricle there is an another semi lunar valve which opens and gives rise to the aorta so thereby it is called as aortic semi lunar valves so now what is the function of these valves what happens is whenever the blood is being sent into these valves okay so these valves when the pressure in the ventricle will increase so these valves will open allowing the blood to flow into the pulmonary artery as well as aorta but as soon as the blood rushes into them so these blood uh, these valves will get closed so they prevent the back flow of the blood either from the pulmonary artery into the right ventricle and uh, from the aorta into the left ventricle so that is the main function of these semi lunar valves right now here this pulmonary semi lunar valve okay so that gives and arises the pulmonary artery so this pulmonary artery splits okay and uh, it divides it divides and forms a left pulmonary artery as well as right pulmonary artery where left pulmonary artery will be joined to that of uh, the lungs where the deoxygenated blood uh, enters into the lungs for oxygenation and uh, the right pulmonary artery will reach to that of the right lung for the oxygenation so that division the branching is being seen of the pulmonary artery and remember dear students that pulmonary artery is the only artery in the human body which is responsible for pumping out the deoxygenated or which carries the deoxygenated pulmonary veins are meant for transporting oxygenated blood and pulmonary artery is meant for sorry pulmonary artery is meant veins are meant for transporting oxygenated blood from lungs and pulmonary artery are responsible for transporting deoxygenated blood because usually what we say is arteries generally they transport oxygenated blood but here these arteries which are being connected to the lungs so they are transporting the deoxygenated blood from the heart to the lungs right next is from this particular part that is aortic semi lunar valve what we can see here so this is where the aorta the largest artery in the human body is being present so this aorta you are able to see it is bending towards the left side thereby we call it as left aortic arc and this aorta is divided into three regions where the first one which is going okay above so that is called as ascending ascending aorta yes and thereafter is the next one is the aorta and thereafter which goes down so that is called as descending aorta and here the ascending aorta which is moving above okay so the uh, towards the anterior part so this uh, ascending aorta divides and gives rise to coronary arteries and those are the arteries which supplies the oxygenated blood to that of the heart yes 
and later this iota which is there the aortic arc so this aortic arc the second part so this is being divided into three parts where are three it gives rise to three arteries the first one is called as the brachiocephalic artery second one is called as the carotid artery and third one is called as subclavian artery okay so three arteries are being formed from the aortic arc one artery which are divide which is being formed by the ascending aorta so that is coronary artery so here this is carotid artery so carotid artery supplies the oxygenated blood to the brain so brachiocephalic artery further divides into subclavian artery as well as uh, the right carotid artery okay and uh, that is how the arteries are being formed which receives a high pressure of the oxygenated blood which will be supplied to different parts of the body and thereafter is uh, this descending aorta further divides and uh, uh, it gets divided and it uh, arises and it reaches to the thoracic duct and the lower parts of the body for the supply of the oxygenated blood now in between the pulmonary artery and the aorta okay so during the embryonic condition there is presence of a duct so that duct is called as ductus arteriosus there is a duct which attaches or which connects the pulmonary trunk with that of the aorta so that is called as ductus arteriosus but as soon as an individual starts developing this ductus arteriosus which is being functional which means it receives the deoxygenated blood and it pumps into that of uh, the aorta during the embryonic condition whereas as soon as an adult uh, achieves the development at that time this ductus arteriosus gets converted into a vestigial form that is called as a liga ligamentum okay ligamentum arteriosum ligamentum arteriosum so what you have to see here is the during the embryonic condition there are two structures which are active as soon as the individual is being born so these two structures become vestigial so first one is uh, the foramen ovale which is the opening present between the two atria so that becomes fossa ovalis and the second one is the ductus arteriosus which is functional during the embryonic life so that later becomes a ligamentus or ligamentum arteriosum so that is a, an another vestigial structure which is being seen in that of the human heart so here in the human heart the right atrium and right ventricle are meant for receiving and pumping out the deoxygenated blood and the left atria and left ventricle is meant for receiving and pumping out the oxygenated blood so here there is no mixing of a single drop of the blood where never the blood drops gets mixed thereby we call this human heart as a, a four chambered heart with a, a double circuit circulation or you can call it as a, a double circulation so this video is all about a, uh the structure of the human heart thank you